find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hi guys, it's the podcast where we uh, get geeky, talk tech for straight from Pittsburgh, PA. It's the Awesome Cast episode two fifty three for this. I should say I should say the dates. That'd be nice. It's June sixteenth, twenty fifteen, and Katie just went live on Periscope. Uh, so we- pizza dog, <laughs> a pizza dog. Katie, dude, this is back with us on periscoping on the periscoping <laughs> on the podcast with the pizza dog. Hi guys. And, hi. How are you? How you doing? Good. Pizza wicket. And also coming with coming to us from Studio B is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters as well. And then his audio went out. No, I'm just kidding. It oh no! <laughs> Don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. <laughs> I just figured it would be a fun little fun little prank to play. On we just had one of those weird out. half hour things where we're like, I don't understand why I can't hear you, Chilla. I was like, Oh, I can't hear anything from coming from your computer. I should probably restart this this iMac. Um, and it was it was interesting too because I, I really like how you called me back from Google Hangout. And what was really interesting, like I was saying, was I actually let it hand off my my cell phone because you called my cell phone. Let it hand off to my PC, and I actually had like a four way call going between the Hangout, my cell phone, the existing Hangout call. Like it was, it was a pretty neat way of that you could actually get a whole audio conference bridge together if you had to yeah yeah or or have or have unfortunate echoing between everybody <laughs> as what happens when i'm like oh i'll just call this person over here and we could this will work out and it's, i forget that it's streaming me back to myself sitting right here and mm-hmm. we just get into this insane thing that happens um, because we used to have everybody on the hangout used to be on separate machines and then we'd bring them all in but then you know realizing they, there was a crosstalk thing that was happening. I don't know what we did differently. I think we did separate hangouts for everybody or something like that, right? And then yeah, we just I think we did. And, then, and then, then something went weird at some point, and it started echoing back. So we put us through everybody in one hangout. <laughs> it's not the ideal ideal way to do this. I know that, right? But it seems it does. I think from the from the remote person's point of view, I think it is the ideal way to do it. I, I, back when we were all in separate hangouts. It, I couldn't. I couldn't always see who was talking. I couldn't. Right. I, I couldn't figure out a lot of what was going on. Social cues. I couldn't tell. Like when it was almost like I felt like I had to raise my hand to, to right, say, right, "Hey, right. switch it to me." And I, I feel like this is the best way to do you it. Know, and it's also interesting because I'm doing that one show. I'm doing that show with LB, the the, the, the LB and the Sorg. Uh, morning, afternoon, power hour we do every weekend. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of a loose thing we're doing, right? And we might do it Saturday, I might do it Saturday. It depends on how the weekend goes. And uh, we we do use Google Hangout to connect, but we just turn the video off. Because let's be honest, both of us probably rolled out of bed. We don't want to see each other, you know. <laughs> and uh, and recording it on there just 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 as a backup and and just because. And uh, you know, it, it, it's it, it, that works because it's only two people though, right? So mm-hmm. it, it kind of works out pretty well. But then you can't see Katie on the couch. For instance, until I until I give you a shot, I can't right now. So I'm invisible. I'm doing cool stuff. Chill out. Really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Yes. On the couch. Yep. Dancing. Dancing on the couch. I see you. Oh, you can. Hi. Okay. Good. (laughs) Yeah, we fixed that problem. Oh, don't. There's the times where where the USB converter thing just doesn't work and that feedback doesn't come back to them. Anyways, this is Inside Baseball with Awesome Cast. I'm glad that you joined us here. <laughs> uh, but you can join us for this and so much more and see these difficulties that we have. Uh, there are trials and tribulations in live podcasting at live.awesomecast.net. Uh, check out us on, uh, uh, of course, uh, the, the Facebooks, the Twitters, the, the, uh, the, the Google+. Plus. We're putting stories and everything out and clips from the show all week long so you can check it out and please converse with us. Let us know what you think about some of these topics. As we're putting some of our opinions out there, we had a lot of stuff from WWDC last week, for instance. And, of course, uh, uh, and also checking out the uh, information at insertcointobegin.com. A lot of stuff about E3 this week. Uh, I, I myself was covering the Nintendo and Square Enix 
uh, uh, sessions today and put up some some follow-up content and follow-up uh, write-ups about that over at insertcointobegin.com and, and all the guys are we've covered every conference so far i think we have somebody i think my brother's going to be covering the pc gaming one this evening so it'll be interesting to see what happens there and of course please subscribe to us rate us especially if you ha- just take a moment if you're enjoying the show you want to support the show uh, please take a moment if you can boot up iTunes real quick look for the awesome cast uh, just search Sorgatron Media and you'll see all of our fine shows and just put a rating in there you don't even have to write anything just put a rating in there so there's a little bit of feedback and, and Apple knows somebody is digging it it will help more people find the show and we really appreciate that but please share it as well anything any conversations any of the clips we put out all that kinds of stuff so we'd like to get started with the awesome thing of the week and let's get started with uh, let's get started with Chilla. What do you got for me this week? So, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I maybe I'm losing my mind. Maybe it's that old age, just, right? It's, yeah, it's getting getting old. Lack of sleep. Mm-hmm. I, I don't remember if I talked about this uh, two weeks ago. There's been so much tech news that's, that's going on between. I, I know I talked about getting the Apple Watch and whatnot, but one of the big big things coming out of Google, Google I/O was the unlimited photo storage, right? Um, for free. Uh, um, <clears throat> I, I started really uploading and I actually, this has actually forced me to, to reorganize my personal photo library as well as set up the uploaders on all of my devices. And when I say all of my devices, that means my iPad, my Nexus 7, my iPhone, my Samsung Galaxy S6, my Samsung Galaxy uh, camera. Um, I'm running Uploader off of a Windows machine and a Mac. Um, So I have a bunch of media all going up into Google's library. Um, Some people might find that scary. Um, I find it actually super convenient as a backup mechanism. after I get this initial upload done, I'm actually going to use a two terabyte drive with a with a and set that up on an old Mac Mini um, and use that as my constant synchronization engine. Um, to me, the whole unlimited unlimited photo and and it's interesting how Google did this, right? They don't give you unlimited drive space; they give you unlimited photo sync. As, and video, as long as the video is 1080p or below, or 16 megapixel or below. Obviously, they do some of their own compression in the back end, um, but this is kind of transforming the whole way I'm looking at family photos, uh, pictures of cons, um, band photos that I've taken in the past, old band videos that, I, that I've, I've taken um, on some old like flip cams and stuff like that. Um, so this is bringing that all back front and center and getting me to actually organize it and get it backed up. Um, also getting it in a, in a way that I can continue to organize it here. Um, right now it's spread across multiple USB drives, SD cards, smaller, um, smaller hard drives, things of that nature. Um, so I can't rave enough about how cool Google has has made all of my photos, including where, you know, I had I had multiple pictures of Christopher um, on the swings. It, it made an animation out of that. It took um, weekend trips and and that Carla and I took, and it actually kind of created the map and a story, and it would show the the dotted the dotted thing of us traveling and then so, pictures of each location broken up by day. So is, um, is, is this, is all that new to you? Were you not using Google photos before in Google plus? I was not using Google photos in Google plus because I, the upload mechanism and the, the not, not having unlimited file space mm. or unlimited storage was a deal breaker for me. So for me to take all, so it's, I don't want to just back up one device, right? I want to back up all the devices. And to have that limit, it really didn't do much for me. Um, now that I don't have to worry about, and, and, and I should rephrase that, right? So the only things that I was uploading to photos was kind of like my polished edited photos, and I was using it to back those up. So you weren't, now, letting, you, you weren't letting it do its thing, basically. Right. That's correct. No, and I did get some auto awesome stuff, and I did get some some little bits of story in the past, but it not at the level that I'm getting now. 
And like I said, the main, the main thing for me was my photo library is my, or actually my, yeah, my photo library is probably about 230 gig um, of photos and video. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where, and it, and it only continues to grow. Right. So right. I, I actually constantly, I'm, I'm old school. So I actually was plugging in my iPhone periodically and running, I don't know if you've ever run capture on the Mac and it lets you just select and drag over all your photos and video from your phone. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was using that to grab the majority of my stuff off my iOS devices. And then I actually had my Google devices set to actually back up to Dropbox. And I was pulling, as the Google devices would sync up to Dropbox, I'd actually cut them out of Dropbox and paste them onto this external drive. Um, so that's where I, I feel like the, this, the new unlimited space is what kind of switched my tune. Because originally my, my thought process was, you know what, um, I'm just going to go Office 365. It's 100 bucks a year, unlimited drive um, storage, and I'm just going to – and I'll pick up Office for free on, on the side. Um, primarily my, my reason for doing that was to back up my photos. Um, which I no longer have to do. And it's really amazing. So, so I've been using it for a while. I, I just turned on the thing in uh, Google Plus that they'll just automatically suck everything up from your phone. And, uh, and so I've been seeing these auto awesomes and, and, and the stories. I've shown some of the stories from the last few weeks uh, that I've had pop up here uh, while you were talking there, Chilla. And, uh, and I love that it just organizes for me. And But the problem has always been now I can't share that. Well, I, great, I can share that to Google Plus people how many people are in there you know mm -hmm. it's not sitting there you know even going in like oh okay i synced to iphoto and now i can okay let's pick out all the stuff out of the I, iphoto library and we'll send that album to photoshop and hopefully it doesn't fail right now it's just well it's just there and it's already picked the best pictures you go to a day it's got highlights and usually it's a pretty good job it's curating it for me which is great, which gives me less friction to share this stuff out, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I, but the only, only weird thing for me is when you go in here uh, and you go to my photos, uh, you know, I have a bunch of uh, just videos because all the raw footage from everything I've worked on in Google Drive also shows up in here. So when <laughs> I can't just have a nice story, we can't just have a nice story, Chella, for Tuesday nights because all this raw footage went to Google Drive. <laughs> <laughs> and so time. it's a mixture of all oh, those those Instagram pictures I took, you know, if there's somebody in here and I like to get a picture of somebody's actually in the studio, right, to show that I'm not just doing this alone. Uh, I'm real. She's real. She's a real person. And, uh, you know, you try to get some cool shots there. But, you know, it, it, you, you still have to curate a little bit there. But, of course, I'm kind of – I think I'm kind of atypical where I'm, like, basically storing my active projects in Google Drive as I use them. So it, it, It's interesting, too, because the, the one thing that – and, and it's actually got me to organize the stuff even on my phones a lot better is I, you'd be amazed at the amount of screenshots I take on Android devices <laughs> and iOS devices. Well, that's kind of your job, and, isn't it? Like, don't you yeah. have to do that a lot? So, so, so just being able to quickly, there's actually an app that they, I think it's 99 cents that'll automatically folder um, and create groups on your phone for those screenshots for at least for iOS. I don't know if it does it for I don't think there's an Android equivalent, mm -hmm. but with, with now with this, I get, it's really nice too. If I'm writing documentation and I do a set for iOS and a set for, for an Android or multiple Android devices, they all upload and they're kind of in order. And then I can quickly take them and grab them and, and put them in folders and things of that nature. Um, so it's worked really well, including some of the stuff, some of the software we have now um, does at least notifications on um, the watch. Um, so having all those screenshots up there too, um, because the watch automatically syncs with the photos on the phone, so, and then so it all comes together. That's to, nice. Uh, to photos. So the, the other the other it, thing that's great. been happening. I, uh, um, so so of course all the videos are going up and videos I take with my phone. We did take a lot, but they're they're making these um, there's they're making these interesting collage videos. They're they're happening. I'm gonna see if I can load one here. But just like like a quick minute 
here let me let me cue this up a quick minute so here's here's some this is i didn't edit this they did it it, it the google machine did it itself yeah. and it's pretty decent and it's just some of that weird stuff that we saw at the, at the coin up uh, hall of fame museum up in aliquippa um just pretty well like like it's picking all the camera moves it's picking the action shots it's cutting out all those weird flubs in between it throws a weird picture and throws a ken burns on it you know i mean it's it like and it just throws that all into a collage too like it's like it's editing better than i am and uh does it add the techno music uh yeah there's music in there there's, there's like some kind of you know they, they pick music and, and, and it seems mm -hmm. to match normally what's going on uh the other one that i see from time to time because again the raw footage from all these end up going up so what I'll get is this collage video. Here's when here's here's a few weeks ago when I was doing the mini shows for everything in that little experiment. So I had a lot of footage going like every day for a bit. So now it's just a collage of my talking head for a minute for the most <laughs> part. Um, and it's 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 interesting, but uh, it'd be more interesting if I had more than just me on on, on camera here. And, and then they throw like this weird video thing and then they throw some stills in there because I randomly took a picture one morning when I was doing these and and, and it thinks that you know it, but but it's it's interesting and, and it is nice because then you can be like hey look at this thing that I did and everybody thinks that you're a, a kick butt uh, iMovie or out there uh, and and it's really just uh, the Google doing it for you you know uh, I I think that's really really awesome have you tried the search function yet I've played around with the search function a little bit. Um, not to the level I think some people have. Um, it's, it's nice. The one question I was going to have for you is how do you assign, can you assign people? I don't think you can because I don't think it officially connects with uh, like Google Plus or anything. Like there's no identification happening in here. So like here's Chachi for instance and there's nothing in here to indicate. It's just like here's pictures of the guy that we think is, is the guy that you clicked on, right? And I don't think if I if I type in his name. Oh, I'm on the wrong keyboard. I'm sorry. So if I, I I type in I'll just type, I'll type in Anthony his first name, and uh, and he, I get him for the most part. But I don't know why that is. I don't know if I've tagged him in these these shots or anything like that. You know what what is that that I don't see any text. Let's see. Let's see. There's info. Um, it knows, man. It just knows. <laughs> Which is kind of scary, but 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 yeah, it doesn't seem to ha be purely identified. There's, there's Katie, and uh, mostly her in here. Uh, but how so, did you get? So how does it? How did you? So like, if I wanted to search for Christopher, he's obviously not on Google Plus. Right. Right. So how is there a way to do some kind of like I've seen other systems, in, including iPhoto, where you can kind of tell it who is who without having to go out to a social network service. I'm guessing there's no way to do that. No, I, they, they really kind of let those, those, those connections go for the most part. Uh, this is interesting. I'm pretty sure um, it thinks that Sawtooth Willie and Will are different people because they show up as different. <laughs> the tooth is the big thing, right? Mm -hmm. That's a giant distinguishable mark, you know? I, it's because it, it, well, those don't know he's, he's missing a tooth as Sawtooth Willie basically, and so that that adds a bit to it. His face, he doesn't have glasses, I guess, you know. But uh, but for a system that supposedly could like look at your pictures from child, you know, child age, and and be able to figure it out, um, I, I'm kind of amazed that that's the case too, you know. So I don't know, uh, but no, I, I definitely recommend it. Everybody should you dump your stuff, give it, give all your pictures to Google, just go for it. Well, the one thing I wish it would do better is it does it does such a good job of uploading GIFs mm -hmm. and and grabbing the GIFs that you've saved off your phone. It does a really good job of pulling them up. What it doesn't do a good job of is it creates the animated GIFs for your burst photos. It doesn't save them back to the device, it seems, properly. No. Which then in turn loops it back up to the cloud, which then corrupts the animation temporarily. I have you, you not understand what I'm saying? I have not seen that actually. That's yeah. I think that's I think that's a chill of power user problem. <laughs> so what I had was I had this burst set of photos, right? And it right. created an animated GIF. And then I went into the photos, the Google Photos app and said, save this back to my device, which would typically take it and put the GIF on the device, which it seemed to do. But now I have a GIF with the same name as the GIF animation that's in the cloud. 
So then it sees that, hey, you've added a new photo down to the device, not realizing that it's the photo that it actually created in photos. Mm. So then it syncs it back up with that file name. And then it overwrites the original animation. And it, You know what? I'll forgive something like that if I can have something like, hey, I want to look at every dog photo I have. <laughs> oh, look at the dogs. Look at the dogs. Look at the dogs. Wait a minute. That's a cat. Wait, where did I see that? I saw a cat in here. Yeah, that's not a dog. That's not a dog. Anyways. <laughs> um, but Google Photos, go check it out. Go check it out. Katie, what's your awesome thing? Hi, guys. Um, uh, yesterday I was in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And because um, there's other Clevelands apparently in my head. Uh, I was up in Cleveland, Ohio for a wrestling event up in Bra. And um, I was uh, wandering around the Q, um, Q Arena, Quicken Loans Arena, as it's more com- my Well, it's known as Quicken Loans. Well, the Q. I'm going to figure my brain out in a second. It's been a long day. But um, what I, I actually wanted to walk around the arena and kind of check out what they're going on, had going on there, and they had this really cool uh, social wall. And essentially, if you tag your photos with, um, you know, you add Q Arena, uh, the Q Arena, or if you um, hashtag the event, they uh, curated all the photos into this photo wall. And it it's, might be kind of hard to see, but in the little, in the middle section there is all these little tiny tiny photos, and it's a collage right in the middle. Oh, there. okay. So so I'm I'm seeing. So it's pulling all the pictures together into the big image, right? Yeah, and this is uh, called the Q Social Zone. And um, there are tweets that would show up about an event on both sides. So it was really neat to kind of just check those out and see what was going on. And I also was tweeting and uh, posted things on um, Instagram about the arena. And I, I didn't I didn't sh- at the arena on my Instagram, but I checked in when I, I – well, I said where I was at taking the photo. Added it to my map. And the arena actually liked it. So it's, it's interesting to actually see a place, pay attention to people mm-hmm. um, adding these photos to a map. So I, I thought it was really neat that they were actually into the social thing so much and uh, putting fans' photos up. And um, even Twitter, they, they were liking and favoriting, or favoriting and retweeting things that fans were posting. And like I said, it, it's hard. Not everybody kind of gets the fact that this is important and the interactions are important. So it was really neat to see that they were really into it. Their social team is into um, interacting with their fans. Do you think? Do you think it was some kind of automated thing, or do you think it was human curated? Um, Instagram, I'm not sure because I don't know what there is in regards to the, I guess the auto likes or the auto. Because um, I, I, I mean, this might be. Do you have any idea? Do you guys have you heard anything of that? No, I have, I have no clue. That's why I was I was interested in, you know, how they were doing it, or when you made mention, you know, their their social team. Mm-hmm. Um, I want I wondered if there's there's a human behind mm-hmm. something watching and searching and and looking for that kind of stuff, or did have they figured out a way to just auto like and auto retweet and then mm-hmm. kind of interact at that level? I, I think. The, the automated is a good start, mm-hmm. um, but until the arena becomes self-aware and can carry on a conversation, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I don't know how far they can really take it in that automated manner, right? right. But it's it, what's nice about the automated. Even if you're, we're here going, is this a person? Is this not a person? <laughs> so even if it's automated, we still, I'm still. You know, I thought this is a person. I'm going to think it's a person because it makes me feel better mm-hmm. <laughs> about their social media team. Not saying it's you know there's anything wrong with their social media team, obviously, or anybody who uses an auto, unless they're just depending on it pure, completely. I mean, it's I, I don't have a problem with places using an auto thing um, as long as they're still keeping a human aspect to it on the side and not just thoroughly depending on it and just retweeting whatever fans say mm-hmm. about them. Because we all remember the pirates, right? It what did they do? Don't you remember when the pirates first had Twitter? They retweeted anything that included the oh, no. at pirates. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. I don't. I, someone has to have that out there still. But it was like pirates are the worst team ever, and pirates are retweeting it. <laughs> pirates suck at this. Blah blah blah. Let's retweet it. Well, that was always a scary thing because, like, even if you're using hashtags, like, yeah. uh, uh, I remember the, the the daily when that was that that iPad app that mm-hmm. was the news. Like, I think the New York Times was using it. Uh, was doing it. And and they had like a Twitter feed for the Super Bowl for each team, and I think the Steelers were in it that year. And 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 it looked like it was about anything could come through there. <laughs> so, I mean, it can be so dangerous if Remember, you have a live feed. I mean, that's why I've really I've really kind of experimented with: do I want a live Twitter stream on the show, mm-hmm. for instance, or a live chat room or anything like that? Because because <laughs> you know we don't have the resources to you know monitor it really. 
uh, or where we, you know, we've seen the fun things where we put up a Twitter wall at the uh, PodCamp events, for instance. Would you remember when the the uh, WWE Network first came, you know, was kicking in, and they were retweeting anything with the word raw? Oh, jeez. The hashtag raw, <laughs> and it was anything from raw vegetables to, um, what it was, you know, not so nice things. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Hashtag raw, and yeah, you don't want to. I have a I have a running search in my uh, tweet deck for like WWE raw and all the wrestling stuff. And uh, I have to be careful because sometimes there's just straight porn in there. It just comes down my feet in my in the middle of my uh, my, my my thing, and uh, I I gotta watch because I use that for uh, for for work stuff. So <laughs> when, yeah, that's actually a good, really good. So I I have the same problem on occasion. Mm-hmm. So so when you're trying to show someone like the concept of Twitter or those things, do you actually have like your own lists made up that you constantly go into and or stay in? Because like if, and maybe I just work with a bunch of people that aren't aren't as aware about social media and Twitter and mm-hmm. whatnot. Mm-hmm. But like I, I actually feel awkward because I, I actually say, hold on one second, let me go into Twitter and like I turn so they can't see my screen and then go into a list that I know or am fairly confident is gonna be pretty darn clean. Well, I'm not using I'm not using a list like that. I and I, and I've done that. I've been teaching or or something, and and you know how random stuff, uh, how wide the breadth of the people I follow is, and, and and I'm involved in. So it's usually like, well, that's a weird wrestling thing that just happened on my feed. But we'll we'll start talking about it, and I get a good laugh, and it goes on, and hopefully it's not something else, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but but again, I'm not following the the pornography Twitter things. It's when I have that just mass search. That's going right. to come up, yeah. And and I don't think TweetDeck, uh, no, TweetDeck does do the um, sensitive, sensitive tweets, you know. But but I I turn that off because I'm always worried about it being oversensitive, because mm-hmm. um, there's a, a guy that we interviewed over on, on on the Mayhem show, and like all of his stuff was like marked as sensitive, and it was just wrestling pictures, and uh, so so I I just shut that off because I like I want to see it. Then then I got too much. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but but even like some stuff that you think should be safe, like Mark Madden has basically retweeted porn before, mm-hmm. right? And that, and that's the kind of stuff oh, yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah, is where it's you're, you're, it's it's almost dumb luck and just bad timing. Right. Exactly. And that's um. I mean, and, and now the pictures pop up automatically. It's just like, whoop, there it is. <laughs> um. And and it's something like he's a radio DJ. He's the drive home guy here uh, locally in Pittsburgh you should be safe, right? You know, for, for terrestrial radio. But of course they go, I mean, I'm like, and Bob, they're a little more loose with the language when they're on Twitter as well. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, it's, uh, it, it's, it's an interesting conundrum. So. I hate to throw them out here, but th- this was one of my favorite um, curated, um, but I, you're not probably not gonna be able to see it very well, but um, the penguins have their own app. And if you download the penguins app and it curates all the tweets, anything that hashtags pens in it, Mm-hmm. And the Pens had, well, it was a rough playoff season, I'm sure you know, um, if you pay attention to sports in Pittsburgh. And, like, the curated of the tweets here, there was one that's, like, the Pens, let's see, the second one, um, want a good laugh, tune into the Pens game, they are a joke. And then at the bottom of the screen, they have their banner ad to buy tickets <laughs> to a Stanley Cup game. <laughs> And it's like, screw this, you know, this, there's tweets that are like, screw this team and all this stuff. And then at the bottom, you have your banner ad. That, hey, why don't you buy tickets? Mm-hmm. So it's, you, you run in, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's interesting for us on this end, but you, that's something you definitely have to pay attention to when you're just like kind of letting it go and saying, hey, go ahead. And you definitely got to, uh, you definitely have to, to watch that and you have to weigh that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I knew uh, somebody I was working with, they were doing some videos and they were getting sponsors on their videos and they ended up turning off comments after a few weeks mm-hmm. because uh, it was a, you know, it's a topic where people are pretty harsh mm-hmm. and, you know, like, like sports would be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're like, well, we don't want that stuff. We want the sponsors to see it. I was like, well, I don't, uh, did the sponsors complain? Hey, that's one thing if the sponsors mm-hmm. complain, but if they don't care that's your community. How else are you engaging with them? You know, and it's, uh, and it's understandable. It's like, yes, you're going to have people hate, to, you know, just being crappy on there, but mm-hmm. there's a way to handle that. Right. Mm-hmm. Instead of just shunning it off. And, and I think that that really kills the, the good conversation it could be having. So, and, and good connection that you're missing with your fans too. So, well, uh, so something called E3 happened 
And, uh, and, and you know, video games, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We're going to be talking about that on ba- Boss Battle here uh, after we're done recording this with uh, AnswerQueenToBegin.com and all those guys. But uh, I thought the technology side was worth discussing here on this show. So, uh, first of all, we, we, we've been talking about this in general over weeks and months and years, uh, but virtual reality, I, I got a sense of virtual reality sort of uh, arriving a little bit. Uh, we had, of course, the follow-up was uh, Sony coming back with Project Morpheus, um, and they were showing that with... Um, they're showing that, and it's going to be due in the first half of 2016, which goes along with Oculus, which is going to be um, Q1 2016, now, Morpheus got my attention because, um, well, one, I think they're pairing a little bit the headset with a controller that already has some motion in it as well, and uh, and and they were showing off a lot of multiplayer elements. So imagine, like, playing VR. VR not, uh, by itself is cool, but they were showing off multiplayer. So other people, you know, had VR headsets, and they were all in one room, basically, and interacting and playing a video game and everything. Um, so, I mean, I, I think that was really good to kind of drive that point home, because we really didn't see a lot of demo of the straight virtual reality from Microsoft. And Microsoft had a big play, I think, as far as virtual reality went. So I, I, I'm really interested to see how these products do compare when they do come out between now three headsets technically four headsets if you count hololens um what are they going to contribute what are going to be the difference between the street virtual reality ones and uh and, and who's going to kind of win this and i think it's going to take a little bit for this to happen now uh, of course microsoft announced they're going to have support for uh the valve vibe i think it is their vr unit as well as oculus and oculus already announced that it was going to come with an xbox controller you will actually be able to play xbox games via the streaming apparatus that they're going to put into the Windows 10 here coming up in about a month. But it's weird because you're playing an Xbox game on a wall in virtual reality. You're not actually immense in it, or that's a mode or something like that. It was, it was very odd the way that they, they kind of represented it. But the biggest thing was, of course, uh, uh, HoloLens. This is the first time they kind of presented HoloLens in front of a gaming audience. And I think, and this is, you know, we saw a little bit of Minecraft before. And they really kind of uh, brought a more a more complex demo for this one. Um, you see, he's, he's sitting up here uh, getting ready for the HoloLens. They're talking about and everything going on. And and, and 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 keep in mind, you're not seeing exactly what he's seeing through the HoloLens when you see this kind of stuff. They have a special camera that will uh, see the same augmented reality stuff that that he's supposed to be seeing. So we get these. The video comes off a little more, I think, dramatic then maybe it's going to be because the people that recently demoed uh, the latest version of HoloLens said that that view area is actually really small. And, it, and, and it, yeah, that, that's, that's was going to be my, one of my big comments was is that how much of this is smoke and mirrors and how much of it is what he's actually, actually getting. Yeah. Kind of getting, but still like this concept here, like something like this where they're building this, this, uh, Minecraft table, and you look in, and it's and you see into the table, and then it rises up, and it's this 3D thing. You know, if that is even a little bit close to what we're seeing here, and it has to be to some extent. But what is that? What is that first-person experience? And nobody's going to know until this gets out. And I don't think they're going to have these things for you to put on your head at Best Buy. And that's the problem with any of this kind of stuff. Just like that's been the problem with the Connect. I, I, I have I don't think I've yet to find a. Uh, an open demo where I can get my hands on an Xbox One other than the Microsoft kiosk up at the mall and actually play something because nobody set up the Kinect. So, uh, you know, the, the, what does, are they going to do Best with Buy this? Best Buy not have the Kinect set up? What's the Best Buy, uh, the, I don't go there too often, but every time I go to Best Buy since the Xbox came out, no. Uh, same with PlayStation 3. I don't. I don't know why. I don't know why. This is this is uh, uh, Best Buy is the ones that set up a, a side by side unit so you could do PlayStation Move and Connect games and try those out. Now, see, I have. I. I, I mean, I have the Connect, and I. I can't imagine not having. Right. The right. And now I'm a completely different use case. They, I want it for the voice control. But I think your Connect is from the. They didn't mention Connect once in this in this presentation. It was all about this HoloLens. It was all about the virtual reality and bringing those experiences and being the place for that. Um, and I think I think your idea of the Kinect being the my my path and in reaching into the world of the video game is being replaced by this technology. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. I mean, I, I, I mean, from a Kinect perspective, everyone that I hear that talks about Kinect, they're saying 
you know, it's great. It would be great if they just included the, the microphone built into the box itself and scrapped mm-hmm. the connect. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that'll be the interesting thing is, is they bring Cortana front and center on the, on the Xbox one update. How's that going to play out? Or even just put the microphone on, um, put the microphone on the controller itself, perhaps. Right. What you kind of do, you can plug your headset in there. So, but, uh, but, but generally, um, but like I said, the, 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 the tech, the tech side is interesting to me, and also uh, uh, some more of the the ideas that they had was well, one backwards compatibility, good, thank you. Uh, I won't get into that whole whole thing, but but the connection between Windows and Xbox, like why has that not happened up until now? Why has me playing something on my Xbox been so separated from this is a PC game that's X, Y, and Z? Now they are doing the thing where, well, I can stream from my Xbox and we'll play it right here on my PC, wherever my PC is in the house, which if you have a laptop, then it's wherever the heck you want it to be, right? Um, and, and, and having that experience come over, uh, the whole Xbox Live experience is now just ported over. And they did this before. There was a Windows for, uh, a, a Windows or Games for Windows Live. I think it was called. And it was Xbox Live for Windows, but it was separate. But you could also, it was also cross-platform. There were a couple games out there where you could actually get achievements by killing a PC player from your Xbox. And but nobody versa. jumped so onto it. But nobody jumped onto it. I think the other problem no is... One, the, the, the problem is no one jumped onto it. And I think one of the things that it took a while for... The, two things had to catch up with each other. The, 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 the people with the lower-end PCs, and even the low-end PCs, can now run the Xbox type games. Whereas right. before, if you had lower end PCs in your household that you could still be running XP, right? Now they're making this a windows eight thing. And then, and there's specific guidelines for this capability. It'll be interesting to see how they, how they let that play out. Mm-hmm. But the, the other thing I think is internal house bandwidth. Um, <laughs> you're not going to push this across 802.11b with a, with an 11 meg Wi-Fi connection, right? Right. You finally have between the the Comcast and the Verizons and whomever putting you know wireless N in the house, which you're probably getting 384 meg, give or give or take, per second across your internal wireless network. Not to mention you have two channels, the, the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies. So I think that the PC platform, the, the low end PC platform, wasn't ready to be able to do this. And, and that's also why they, they had a problem getting adoptions on the, the windows um, live for windows. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think it's the, the, the home infrastructure. It, it's one thing to get, you know, a, a, a two to three meg connection out to the internet. So you can make sure that you can actually get on Xbox live and have a decent experience. And three meg now is nothing. I mean, you have you know, our, or look at our FiOS connections, right? Either you're like 25 up and down, 50 up and down, 75 up and down. I, I think it's the combination of, of bandwidth and, and performance. Awesome. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I'm looking forward to see what happens when, when Windows 10 comes out here in another month and a half. You you have the Xbox One, so I'm sure you'll, you'll be let us know how that kind of uh, handoff is going to be. Uh, really, for this, uh, generally, like I said, we'll talk about this a bit more on Boss Battle here in a little bit. But... Uh, you uh, you know i think finally xbox has convinced me eh, maybe it's time to pick one up right uh and, and it'll be as long as that list of titles i can look at my shelf of, of xbox games you're like yeah about everything's playable on here right uh that because it needs to replace what's sitting in my living room and right now it doesn't because i'm still playing so many of those games Best Buy's doing some kind of upgrade promotion where you can you can trade in your old Xbox 360. But I don't want to trade it in because then I uh, I'm not gonna be able to play all my games. It's yeah, one thing. Yeah. It's one thing if I have a small handful of games I still want to play, and I have an Xbox around, and I put it on the office TV, I put it I put it in the you know in, in the studio, something like that. That's one thing. But the living room needs to stay clean for me, and it needs to have one box hooked up to it, and that's it. The the one thing that really surprised me, and this is more on the the tech side than the gaming side, is you know they they've always touted how the 360 and the one kind of drove the 
tile and, and modern UI. Mm-hmm. And now they're saying, and I didn't get to see a lot of that footage of, of the new UI, but they're saying they're changing the UI for the one. And I, and I, I don't know if that's also going to work its way down to the 360, but if you had a UI that mirrored a lot of the Windows 8 slash Windows 10 look and feel and, and the way you have the active tiles and everything else, and now you're saying, yeah, we're, we're going to go in a different direction over here. And it was all about one platform and you know, right once deployed to many. Or are they, why, why are they doing that? And I, I didn't hear a lot of reason as to why they're redoing the UI. The yeah, only thing I heard it was it, more about community and finding right, friends. Right, they're, they're not, not, not making the mistake that they did before, right? That, that we're, we're going to talk about something other than games, right? Mm-hmm. So they didn't want to get into a lot of that, I think, so... Yeah. All right. Uh, but like I said, we'll talk about that. Check out insertcointobegin.com for all E3 coverage and uh, our podcast on that as well. Uh, we have an app of the week. Hi, guys. Uh, I, mean, I think that's Katie's. Hi, that's me. What you got? I got the... Oh, I forgot. Where's my app thing at? It disappeared. That's where I'm at today. Uh, the Like That Garden. Um, I'm a big planter and I'm a big gardener and I'm a big... What's, what's this flower here? Um, it's actually, a, there's several like that apps that I think are really, really cool. Uh, the like that garden specifically just because of this time of year, uh, you take a picture of the flower and, um, it essentially uses the, um, it, it's able to identify the flower based upon how it looks. And, um, it's very, very accurate. Cause I was, I was taking photos of things that I knew what they were and they, it was right on. Um, and that, um, so it was really neat for me because I'm always like, what is this plant? What is this thing here? So, um, it, it's a really cool app for that. And the other two that they have are like that, and it's a pet finder, and there's like that, like a furniture finder. Um, if you see a piece of furniture, like, oh, I love this couch, you take a picture of the, the couch, and it tells you where you can find it. Uh, the pet finder uh, takes a, you take a picture of a type of animal, cat or dog, and it tells you the local shelters that have that type of dog available or cat available. So it's a really neat adoption tool, too. Now, it actually, I hadn't heard of them until I, I checked out the garden app. But I, I was pretty impressed with their visual um, recognition software. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So, so it's mostly flowers because I have some leaves I need to identify. No, it does leaves too. <laughs> it, does. It, like, it does because we were it looking at vines. Is this poisonous? Yeah, no, it'll tell you though. It'll tell Good. you if it's poison ivy because um, we were checking out a vine and it'll give you several options. So, so just in case uh, you're not, it, it's not right on the first time. If you go through the pictures, just scroll through, and it gives you options. Um, of other pictures to look at from that one. So maybe it looks like, Oh, it kind of looks like that one. You click on it and you can look through more pictures that people have po- you know, that they've posted, uploaded online, mm-hmm. um, to see if it's whether or not it's it. And then you, you click again and you, I think you go to the Wikipedia site for the plants, but it's, it's still neat how you can learn about the plants and figure out what everything is and whether or not it's poisonous is a very good application for that, <laughs> especially for you. <laughs> yeah. I presume you can click through like a couch and like you could buy it somewhere. Or yeah. Something the, like, the, that. like so, that furniture one. So that's probably how they're, uh, and it's probably some kind of application of course with the adoption mm-hmm. and agencies and everything for the other one. So that's, that's a pretty cool use of uh, uh, recognition mm-hmm. software there. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So that's uh like that apps.com. And if you type like that, I'm downloading uh, like four of them right now mm-hmm. uh, to check those out. Awesome. Thanks. And, uh, I don't know, do they have a Like That Pizza? Mm. You identify makers of pizzas, Katie? Man, I, I personally, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I need an app. <laughs> There's an app for that, right? Somewhere <laughs> along the line. Slice on Broadway, our friends are helping out. I know uh, we were delayed, which gave uh, Katie an opportunity to eat more of the pizza. Oh, man, I ate a lot of pizza. Because <laughs> we were really like getting started. periscoping started. pizza. Periscoping pizza, pizza, check her out on there. Uh, but Slice on Broadway, <laughs> they've been... What, what, <laughs> ah! <laughs> pizza. <laughs> there you go. So they're, they're hooking us up uh, Thank you guys. with some great pizza every Tuesday night, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with Pepperoni Pizza. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, go check them out there in the South Hills of Pittsburgh here. They're just actually uh, mentioned in uh, nextpittsburgh.com in a recent article talking about the upcoming t- Taste of Beachview event that's going on here in the area so trying to get people uh through the tunnel and into the south hills and we got some great stuff here uh crested duck charcuterie which i never go to because i never know when they're open um and, and a bunch of other stuff some mexican food some some uh really cool places i have been addicted to this ham and cheese sandwich 
that they had with apples and uh, the grape mustard mm. or something on it up here at the top of the hill at uh, Bro- Brew on Broadway. Mm. Uh, so, uh, but go check out Slice on Broadway. They're here in the in the in the South Hills, and they're also at Carnegie PA down Main Street. They're on social media at PGH underscore, underscore Slice, and look for Slice on Broadway on the Facebook and Instagrams, and get hungry too, and let them know you heard about them from the awesome cast let's get into some more stories for the week i I, it has been kind of a story suck a little bit right but uh i do know i'm thinking forward we're making some moves here where we're we're trying to do more to grow sorgatron media and our podcasting network and i think the big thing our wish list is certainly a twenty (laughs) thousand dollar microsoft surface hub pen display cost Put that on the wish list, my business manager upstairs. Uh, that's something we need down here. Could you imagine this thing? Uh, you, could, but, you could do the seven thousand dollar model. We could probably to, no, we, no, to, we're no. going all in. All in. <laughs> She's still chewing pizza. <laughs> Uh, we have so much food for a podcast. You probably t- they brought me ten bits because they were just up north from Cleveland and everything. So well, that's why you show us from here up because you, I actually am as big as this couch. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's a it's a very awkward body type. Um, there's the, the bigger one. There's the, the big difference one. is primarily the the TV size, right? Right, 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 <laughs> right. Basically, um, so so I mean, it's it's. It's a Surface Hub. It's it's a Surface tablet, right? It, 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 and it's and they got some kind of great deal, and they're making these in America, I think. They're making them locally. They're not outsourcing these at all. Uh, so, yeah, $20,000 for an 84-inch 4K version, which means you can, which means they just put, uh, I think they just put 8K uh, video on YouTube. I think I actually have a story in here about that, too. So you can watch that if you have the bandwidth. Good luck. Um, also, there's uh, what's the 55 inch version is available for seven thousand dollars, and that's only it is only only HD at 1080p. I think we can get away from that with that actually. <laughs> I, I, think, I think the important thing is is that it has a hundred simultaneous touch points, so you could have ten people touching it simultaneously with all their fingers, and it would actually register every tap. Wow, so can I play Simpsons Tapped Out with this thing with all my friends? That, or you could do some kind of crazy 10-player um, air hockey simulator <laughs> and use your, everybody uses different fingers. Oh, it'll thing. be the best game of Fruit Ninja ever, <laughs> which I think they do have on there, so um okay all right go check that out check that out i mean that was that's kind of fun thing i don't know i don't know if anybody's actually getting this apparently twit is already going to buy one they already have this on the wish list so look out for we're that looking at these, we're looking at of these of course kind of, you guys are looking at these things but it's it's you, it's one of those things where what do you work for we, what do you work for we, i you know i'm just uh, in lieu of telling people what you actually work for what's the name of the bank from uh how i met your mother GNB oh, Goliath, National, Goliath Bank. National Bank. That's that's how we're going to say that you work for from now on. Listen, Chilla over there at Goliath <laughs> National Bank is going to have one of these at least one on every floor in their cool. in their fancy new building. <laughs> they probably the, already the do. The question starts to become is you know when you look at true video conferencing and, and codecs and and how how a lot of that actually works. A lot of times it seems, from my understanding, is it's actually a piece of specialized hardware. It's, uh, that that kind of goes into the room and then handles all of that video transfer and then compression and things of that nature, and and throwing a Windows box with a bunch of applications on top of it, I'm not a hundred percent sure this that's the best way to do it. Now I'm by no means an audio video uh, specialist. Sorg, you'd have way more knowledge than I would on on the the concept of trying to push massive amounts of video from a bunch of endpoints into a single point and then redistributing that back out. Mm. I mean, this this device is kind of trying to be its own little Google Hangout. Did you, did you see server. the problems we had at the beginning of this show? Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that pretty much illustrates my expertise. Uh, but no, what, I mean, that's, I mean, we're doing this with no budget. We're not an AV team at a, at a Goliath National Bank. Um, I, I'm, you I'm stick, don't have $20,000 large tablets hanging off twenty thousand dollars <laughs> i would need to i would not be able to do that uh <laughs> can i take a loan out like my car for this thing 
What, what, where I'm interested in is, you know, there's, it, it takes a certain amount of using this type of device repetitively to get used to, to get used to using it. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have these styluses and, and it's a touch screen and you're going to have your finger. Right. And you, it's not, people need to get over the fact that they're not going to walk up to a whiteboard and grab a different color marker and draw on a whiteboard. You're drawing with probably some kind of capacitive stylus or some kind of rubber nubbed stylus that's not the same as that marker. And that's maybe for our demographic, it's, it's a, it's easier for us to adapt to that, theory of you know the digital natives versus what's with the there's the digital natives versus the and i can't remember what the other the, the other groups called but that concept i don't know how well this is going to sell to your goliath national bank type is it going to sell to your four moms mm -hmm. oh i'm sure yeah but it, to, to hit mass penetration I think it's going to take a lot of time for people. This this isn't a mass. This is not a mass penetration project product. No. I mean, no, I, and I, I think, I'm not even saying even for the even for the companies that can afford this type of technology. But then again, but then again, the adoption is going to be slow. You already have smart boards in 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 high schools, middle schools, right? But that, and see, that's the difference. So, is that in the, how long does it take? for that student population to become the majority mm -hmm. of the employees. So this is this, I mean, I want to know, I want to know, I don't think anybody in these videos was under 40. So, right. I mean, they're all like millennial ish age, right? Uh, right. So they so, all died of dysentery. They all died, what? <laughs> in fear <laughs> from, of the from, river. From, um, uh, Oregon trail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. But, <laughs> but still anyways, um, I think okay. you guys are missing the main application for this is we can now solve crimes like CSI and Hawaii Five O using our fingers and just flipping things together and going, look, that's how they killed them. We are the future now. We can solve crimes. They, they actually called out on one, one show I was listening to. They actually used something like this in House of Cards mm. where it was some house committee something or other and somebody is like, oh, I got it right here. And he flipped it up to the thing. And they're like... And then everybody tech watching the show was like, BS. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then like here we was like, Look, that was it. That's exactly what they used was this thing here. So, um, but you know, we've kind of seen that placement a little bit. Now, by the way, it was like, it was weird because I felt like, I, I, I think in that show they had like Microsoft stuff all over for like three episodes. And then it was like all Apple for the rest of it. Like I, I, it, was, it was a weird thing that happened there if you, if you know this product placement. But anyways, um, <laughs> Uh, but no, let's ch check that out. I don't want to dwell too much on the things we can't afford like that. But uh, let's see. Oculus. Oh, I, you know, I talked about before uh, the Oculus controller. Just real quick. Real, 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 real quick. Um, so they, they created this new thing, and I'll, I'll show it here in a moment. But it, it, it's a goofy looking thing. Uh, first off, but it makes so much sense. One, it's kind of smaller. When I actually went and watched the video, I'm hoping they have a picture of it here. Uh, so far, it's just a headset. Uh, but it's... Uh, Okay, it's not loading. Uh, but 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 they have these uh, 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 spatial controllers, and they kind of wrap around your hand, and you still have a thumbstick and everything, so you can move, and it actually knows what your where your hands are. And and they said even to the point where it would have gestures, right? Like uh, like if it would know if you you did a thumbs up or you pointed at something, and 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 it'd be a little more natural. Uh, but uh, but I just wanted to kind of point that out. They're calling it a half moon. Oh, it's codenamed Half Moon. It's being dubbed uh, the Oculus Touch. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that works out. And again, I'm hoping there's something where we can try these out in the Best Buy or something, uh, even if it's like a tour thing, like sometime in the near future as well. So, uh, Sheila, any stories uh, uh, sticking out there you want to get to before we leave? One, one thing real quick before we leave. Um, it's probably the last thing on the list. The three-port USB hub with the magic port. The magic um, port? It has a magic port. Um, so this is pretty cool, and we, we always talk. We, we've talked in the past about you know hardware KVMs and, and software KVMs. Um, Synergy, I think, was an app that we reviewed probably like two three years ago. Um, 
But that being said, this is a hardware KVM. It's actually a three port USB 3.0 hub and it has a magic port. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to connect a Windows, an Android or a Mac OS device to it and then another device to the to the magic port. And what that then does is, let's say you put a, a Windows and a Mac, it, it, you plug it into the Windows, the Mac device, and you then plug the, the, the Windows device into the magic port. You can now use the same keyboard and mouse across both devices. It'll actually share the clipboard. Wow. Um, and it'll let you drag fi- do, do drag and drop file transfers. Um, so I thought this was pretty cool, and one of the things they talk about it is Android compatible. Um, so I'm interested to see how that works. Um, I think you still have to have separate monitors um, since it's KVM connect the mouse to the yeah, PC. Yeah. Um, so so I thought this was a pretty cool concept, um, especially for people that as as people have either multiple computers or I, I don't know, will this adapt to the Chromebook? Um, have a multiple computers in the home and allowing you to, to use that one keyboard mouse and monitor and then kind of just drag and drop back and forth. Um, thought it was a pretty cool product. Awesome. Awesome. Go check that out. Is there a website for you to look it up or is it just on Amazon? It's or on something? Amazon, 25 bucks. Awesome. Check it out. Katie, you got a story before we head out of here? I'm going to pew pew three in the time that you're oh, no. in one. Oh, What's no. up now? Uh, first one, Amazon is building an app to let normal people deliver packages for pay. Uh, so they explored the whole idea of using Uber and taxi cabs and stuff. Mm-hmm. But now they're thinking about using normal people to deliver for them. Bum, bum, bum. Two, Instagram's going to target their ads using the info from your Facebook by winter. So instead of those funny Instagram ads where you're like, wow, these people are way too fancy to be my friends, you'll know that they're actually items that you're interested in <laughs> based that, upon Facebook. Is, is, that what, is that what your experience has been on on? Uh... Yes. These people, my friends, are not this coordinated, and um, they do not look that good. I love you, friends, but you are not that fancy. And then, um, yeah, so it's finally, that's, there's there's the connection between Instagram and Facebook, folks. This is why they, uh, they pay the big bucks for Instagram. Because they, there's not that much input on, mm-hmm. on what you like or anything, because there's just the information attached to the photos, and that is mm-hmm. so sparse. Mm-hmm. So, unless they, what they need is that machine learning stuff that Google Photos is using. <laughs> To be able to figure this out, so but they've done. They've, they're, Facebook's getting a lot better at curating news, though. Mm-hmm. I will give them that. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm pretty impressed when you reason, read a link or a news article that someone posts. It then pops up and says, "If you like that, you may like all this other crap." Um, and it's actually pretty, pretty packed with information. And I, I find myself actually clicking through to the other ads. Sorry, I held up your pew, pew, pew. Well, I know. I was pewing, and you ruined my pews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another pew. Pew. Well, final pew. People lost their mind because Spotify changed their green logo from a kind of pea green to a neon green. What? Yeah, people lost their mind. Look it up. There were lots and lots of tweets where people were very angry because they did not like the color of the um, Spotify um, app. And, it, but, and they're using that odd green that some people interpret for other colors, right? Yeah. Oh, so, wait, is this another dress situation? <laughs> yeah, this is another dress situation. Yes. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. Yep, see, look at that. Ah! Oh, no. Lost my mind. I'm very annoyed by this new Spotify color change. <laughs> you did, like, seriously? It, oh, doesn't, no. it doesn't even work on my uh, on my screen here. This is an older monitor, and the colors are a little off. So it's just like, what what's happening here? But, Wow. Well, on that note, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Katie at K Dutters on the Twitters. Yay. Yay. I'll Yay. Be, oh, I'll be back later tonight. That's right. We're talking some wrestling. wrestling. So you're out there in Cleveland for mm-hmm. Raw. There'll be a lady night on the uh, Wrestling Mayhem, Mayhem show. And uh, Chilla is at Chilla on the Twitters um, and, and doing things on top of the tower at, at uh, uh, Goliath National Bank, uh, <laughs> downtown <laughs> New York City. Uh, his friends call him Barney. <laughs> Anything? No? That's it? I'd rather him be That's, Bruce Wayne uh, at Gotham Towers. I think he's Bruce not. Wayne. Yeah, I'd, I'd much rather be. Or, or can there I be at Stark Towers? Yes, yes, sorry. <laughs> there you go. At Stark <laughs> Towers, where they have all the service hub screens six months ago that they Jarvis needed. Jarvis is my co-pilot. Oh, Jarvis <laughs> is my co-pilot. 
<laughs> you can check out stuff. I'm at Sorgatron.com. I was pontificating Instagram video uses last night, uh, late at night, and you can go check those out. And uh, I got a link over there for uh, how, what we've been doing. Uh, uh, how about Instagram video musical uh, musical jingles to brighten your day that we're doing weekly over there at the Sinclair Instagram? Um, that and other ideas and uh, other stuff. I had an article about LinkedIn. Why would you use it? Because I... I uh, um, Kind of, kind of like somebody, somebody uh, told me a week ago that uh, that that nobody uses Insta- or LinkedIn. Just stop. And then the next day, I went and did a gig off of LinkedIn, <laughs> <laughs> amongst other conversations about the usefulness and using of, of, of it. Uh, I'm finally, and I want to clarify, I am finally figuring out LinkedIn. And even I got a little tip from from the. Uh, how to find somebody's like notification or something because i couldn't even figure out that little bit but anyways um and of course please check out everything at live.awesomecast.net tuesdays uh we're at least fiddling and screwing with technology here on a live stream about 6 30 p.m eastern every tuesday is up at awesomecast.net awesomecast on the twitters the facebooks and the google plus please uh subscribe to us all the links are over there but stuff like youtube itunes spreaker stitcher iHeartRadio. Please uh, click the button for the Patreon if you're really enjoying the show, if you enjoy the information, if you're enjoying the awesome chats that we're having, uh, you can contribute uh, to that. Become our boss. Uh, 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 you know, it's it, we, we have the people helping out over the Wrestling Mayhem show, and it's really, really awesome to see you guys uh, uh, you know, uh, stepping up and supporting the show. And we're going to try to do some really cool things if we get some more people on board with that. And not fix the thing that made Chilla go away for the first 30 minutes of this thing, too. Uh, that, that's that's kind of uh, primary number one. Uh, we can't fix technology with pizza but uh, also thank you i have them. tried we have tried no yeah we tried she always like had a slice and was trying to slather the, the cord <laughs> with it and it just didn't work at all didn't work at all we, got, we almost have to throw the computer away now um but anyways uh oh that's so much more thank you to our awesome chat wheels juggalo john uh, a few more in there as well uh talking with us all night long and uh so thank you to our awesome chat you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Let's start the show. Let's talk How about the... About- we start Let's, our feelings. Why are we here? Let's talk. This is, <laughs> welcome to Feelings Cast. Welcome <laughs> to Feelings Cast. That's that's what I do with LB on the weekends, actually. Um, download that Power Hour. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg. Wait, how do I start this show? <laughs> Let's this just is, keep this. No, no, no. Keep going. It's Tuesday keep going. night. It's Tuesday night. We're in the studio. Welcome to Awesome Cast. Mm-hmm. I'm going to introduce the show now. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tuesday night. You got your iPhone out there, all stroking it. That's no, nope, I'm not doing nope, that either. I'm not nope, doing that either. No, no, we, no. It's in the show notes. You're yeah, it's in the show <laughs> notes. It's not in the show notes. Welcome to Awesome Cast, the show where we get geeky, talk tech, social I'm media. I'm so and more. off. I feel like I haven't done. Like, How long have you been? You've done 251 of these. I feel like you got it by now. Nope. <laughs> Nope. Can we do an? Can we do have this as just after show stuff? Because this is this is gold. <laughs> Most likely, yes. Most likely, this will be after the show stuff. So the real one's going to happen in three, two.